Hi there! In this tutorial, you're going to learn about the basics of the Prop Puppet tool, which allows you to manipulate your prop in real time as you record. I'll show you how you can animate a scene like this in quite literally less than a minute. It's not as hard as you think. First, I'm going to go to the Prop section and import a cross shape. You can see here that in the normal prop movement mode, I can move my prop around the screen like so. If I want more dynamic and interesting movements for my prop, I can use the Prop Puppet tool. You can find it over in the Modify panel to the right, or just press the Shift F2 hotkey. In the Tool window, movement is set to horizontal. This means I can move my prop along the X and Y plane. If I select the Vertical Radio button, my prop will move vertically along the Z axis. If I choose the Rotate Movement option, my prop will rotate around according to my mouse movements. The Advanced tab has many more options for rotation. Finally, there is Scale, where I can scale my prop larger or smaller. Another cool thing you can do is hit the respective numeric keys on your keyboard while previewing to adjust the prop movement. If I start at horizontal movement, but press 2 while previewing, I will be able to move vertically as well. If I press 3, the rotation will begin. Now let's take a look at the advanced panel. I'm going to delete all the values here, except for the horizontal one, to start from scratch. You'll see the horizontal movement here when I preview. I'll add in a Y value here, and you'll see now that my prop will move along the Y plane as well. If I add in a Z value, you'll see the prop move up and down along the Z axis. I can move the Z value and one of either X or Y, but not all three axes at the same time. If I move on to rotation, you'll see the results for rotating along the Y axis, and then along the X axis. Another important aspect of prop movement is the global and local options shown at the top. I'm going to rotate my prop on the stage here to demonstrate the difference. You can see here that even though I rotated the prop, it still goes along the grid axis. This is called global movement. If I switch to local, then my x-axis movement will be along that prop's individual x-axis, which is slightly tilted here. You'll see the same result when I add a value to the y-axis as well. You've probably noticed that there are a bunch of templates available on the left side of the window. If I select one of these, you'll see all the values of my prop movement will change. I can preview to see the results. These are all set to global as default, but as you can see, if I change to local axis, then it will have the same result as the regular movement. You can see the difference here when I use a scale template. The global axis will cause the size to stretch larger while the local axis won't really affect the thickness. This next template combines stretch and movement values. Take a look at the stretch values and see the results as I demonstrate. This template is good for simulating cartoon-like dynamic actions that combine movement and object stretching. Finally, you can record any of these animations in real time by using the record button. I'll just move the mouse around to simulate my animation and then press space to stop recording. Once I've done that, I'll move the time scrub to the beginning, reposition my camera for a better angle, and then play. Now you can see the results of my animation. The Prop Puppet tool makes it that easy to create a cool looking dynamic animation in seconds. 
Okay, now I'm just going to use the simple prop puppet feature to give this eyeball some life here. Let's just pretend there's some sort of swamp creature below the water. I've just used one of the default iClone 5 terrains along with a water map. So first, I'll enter into the prop editor with Shift F2. You can see that as I move my eye along, I get a little bit of bounce depending on the speed of my mouse movement. Once I stop somewhere, I can then just press the 3 key and give my eye a rotate profile, so now it can look around cautiously. Next, we'll just pretend it sees something scary, and I'll press the 4 hot key for scale. Now you can see the eye go large with fright in a cartoon style, then disappear beneath the waves. This was all done with a few simple mouse swipes. After I practice my puppet sequence a couple of times, I can go hit record and do it again. You'll see that my character will move closer, glance around cautiously, and then get freaked out and bail beneath the waves. When I play back, my sequence will now look like this. Pretty easy, right? And the best thing about it is anyone can do it in minutes. Have fun!